In this video, I'm going to show you how to manually separate simulated process step by step in Photoshop. And we start right now. Welcome back in this video, I'm going to show you how to separate this complicated piece of art here so that way we can screen print it. Let's go ahead and dive right on in, not waste any time here. So we'll just change this from a background image and I'll leave a link so that way you can download this and follow along. Now we're going to use a process called simulated process for a print like this. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a t-shirt layer. We're gonna go down to this little plus sign. I went over to my channels. If your channels aren't showing up, just go to window and channels. Uh, I know I just said layer a second ago, but we're creating channels here. Uh, the reason being is in channels within Photoshop, that is how you go about creating a spot color. The first thing we'll do is create a t-shirt color. In this case, I want the t-shirt color to be black. So we'll just click on the little plus sign. It'll give us a new channel called Alpha One. We'll double click on that. We'll call this t-shirt color. And we'll select down here where it says spot color. And right under the color, we want to make that black. So I'll just drag my little selector down to black. We'll click OK and OK. So now we have a t-shirt color. Let's go back to our RGB channels here so that way we can take a look at the image. And this is going to be a repetitive process. The next thing we'll do is go to select color range. And we're just going to work our way down every single one of these listed right here. So we'll start with red. We'll select reds. We'll click OK. Now we'll make a new channel mask based off of that selection. We'll click on that. Now we can hit Command D. Don't forget, always hit Command D after you're finished, just to deselect that. We'll go down to our alpha channel here and we'll hit Command I to inverse that because what we see here in black is going to be what we actually print. So we need to inverse that. We'll double click on that Alpha 1 channel and we'll call this red. We'll make it a spot color. And rather than it being this RGB spot color, as you can see, there's this little exclamation mark which tells us, hey, we can't print this color red. We can always click on that. It'll give us the nearest color that's an actual printable red, which this will work great because it's 99% magenta, 100% yellow. We can even make this 100% magenta but we'll hit OK, and our solidity, we're going to make 15%. Now, what is solidity? It's basically how bright this is going to look on screen. It makes zero difference on uh, once you go to rip your separations and you expose your screens. This is really just kind of how vibrant this is going to be. The intensity, if you will. I find that 15% is a, a pretty good range to kind of replicate how bright this color is going to be on press. So I'm going to stick with 15%. We'll hit OK. So there we go. We have our red. I'm totally skipping over one of the most important things, which is our white base. So we'll go back up to RGB. I'm going to hold Command down over this little RGB thumbnail. And you'll see this box that shows up as I hit Command on the keyboard. But we want to select that, so we'll just click on that. And now it's selected this entire image, basically all the colors in there. Now we're going to make a new channel mask. We'll click the little button down here, go to Alpha 1. We'll hit Command D to deselect, just to make sure that we don't have that selection going when we hit Inverse. So now we'll hit Inverse. Now we have our white base created. We'll double click on that. We'll call this white base. We'll choose spot color and we'll make this white. And we'll turn this one to 100% because we always want to view that white as 100%. We'll click OK. Now we can drag this above red. How we're looking at these separations here is we got our shirt and then we have our white base that'll go down and then our red on top of that. And we'll make some adjustments here as we go along but for now let's just get all of our colors down let's go back to rgb we'll go to select 
color range. The next one we want. Generally, I'll do blues. Uh, this is a print order I like to do. So let's do blues. We'll click OK. Even though it's saying warning, no pixels were selected, no more than 50%, it still selected something. So let's click on the channel mask. We'll hit Command D, 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 select. Go down to this alpha channel. You can see that we do have something there. Again, make sure we deselect. Hit Command I to inverse. We'll double click on that channel. We'll call this blue. We'll turn it to a spot color. And for our blue, we'll put 100% cyan, 50% magenta, zero on the yellow. If you want to make this an even brighter blue, we can. Let's give that a try. We'll hit OK. And then we want to make our solidity 15%. We'll hit OK there. Let's go back up to RGB. The next one we want to do is yellow. So we'll go to select, color range. We'll choose yellow and hit OK. And yet again, we'll make a new alpha channel off of that. We'll hit Command D to deselect. We'll inverse that, double click on it. We'll call it lemon yellow. We can't just call it yellow. I'll demonstrate why that is. The, the problem with calling it yellow is that uh, sometimes you're working in CMYK and that is one of the default colors of the system. But if we were to bring these separations in to another program, say for example, Adobe Illustrator, it would not import that spot color. So let's just call it lemon yellow. And we want to make sure to put maybe two or 3% in the magenta. We'll click OK. If we didn't put two or 3% in the magenta, we just put zero. It'll revert it right back to yellow. So let's call it lemon yellow. We'll put that 2% in the magenta. We'll make this 15% on the solidity. We'll hit OK. And we're starting to build this image up. Do you struggle with separating your screen print art? Mm -hmm. Let me quickly show you how Action Steps separates your artwork. Let's dive into the computer. I have Adobe Photoshop open. Action Steps is a Photoshop plugin. We'll go to Window, Actions. We'll load up our Action Steps plugin. We'll click this hamburger button right here. Go to Load Actions. We'll find Action Steps and click on Button Mode. First thing I want to do is create a proof window so I can compare my separations to my original artwork. Now we'll come down here to where it says Start Action Steps and click on that button. And just like that, we have our separations ready to go. If we go over the channels, you'll see that we have nine separate colors, but let's say we only have a six color press. So we'll click on this little button right here that says six color press. Now we've effectively reduced it down to six colors. Here's our white base, our red. There's really no blue in there. We'll just leave that off. Click on yellow. We got a cool gray and a highlight white. In this case, we could just click and drag this blue separation into the garbage. And now we have reduced this down to five colors. That was pretty fast and simple, wasn't it? Instead of spending hours separating artwork, not only does Action Steps come with a Photoshop plugin, but it also comes with a training course teaching you how to use the actions but how to screen print simulated process step by step from installing the actions, adjusting your separations, what mesh count to use, the best type of emulsion, to screen printing your art on press. I leave no stones unturned within this training. You also get access to our Action Steps members only group, which is private and just for you guys where you can go and ask questions and get answers to your questions. And you can interact with other members that are having success and pick their brain. Don't just take my word for it. Check out Kyle's prints. He knew nothing about screen printing, found action steps, and has since scaled his business from a manual press to an automatic. Or Matt Eball, who had never printed simulated process and is now kicking out some pretty awesome prints. Action steps cost less than a tank of gas and it's a one-time fee. It also comes with a 100% satisfaction guarantee, so you have peace of mind. Click the link below and learn more now. The sale won't last long, so click the link below and see how action steps can help. We'll see you on the other side. We'll go to RGB. Select color range. 
Next thing we want to do is we'll do magentas. We'll click OK. Don't worry about that warning. There are, in this particular image, probably a little bit of magenta in there somewhere. We'll go to Alpha 1. We'll hit Command D. We'll hit Command I to inverse. And there's just a touch of magenta in there. Uh, depending on your image, you may have a lot of magenta in there. But there's really not a whole lot here that I'd even want to waste the screen on. So we'll just go ahead and we'll throw that away because we just don't really need it. We'll go back up to RGB, select color range. I doubt that there's going to be any green, so I'm going to skip over that one. We'll choose cyan. We'll click OK. There might be a little bit of cyan inside of the face here or this armor that we got going on here. So we'll see what we got. We'll make a new alpha channel, Command D to deselect. And you can see that there is some cyan throughout there. So we'll hit Command I to inverse that. We'll double click on it. Instead of it, us calling it cyan, we'll call it turquoise. We'll choose spot color. We'll make this 100% cyan, zero magenta, and maybe we'll put about 5% yellow in there just to kind of give us a turquoise color. I mean, it's pretty close to cyan, but um, generally we're using turquoise to kind of replicate cyan. Or you might have turquoise in your separation, in which case we would just use the select cyan color here. Change solidity to 15%. We'll hit OK. Go back up to RGB. And we're going to do a highlight white. So we'll go to select color range and we'll do sampled colors this time and what I'm going to look for is a place within this graphic that is 100% white this looks like 100% white here we'll take our little eyedropper we'll select that and we can turn this up to let's just make it 100% for now because we can always go back and pull some of that out so we'll click OK We'll come down, make a new channel mask, hit deselect, go to that channel mask. We're going to inverse that. We'll double click on it. We'll call it highlight white. And we'll make it a spot color, turn it to white. And with our white, our highlight white, we want to make that one 100%. And we'll hit OK. So now we're, we're almost there. Last thing I think I want to do is select a gray out of all this. One way we can do that is I do like to make a new layer here. We'll make a square and we'll fill that with a nice gray for us to select something that's going to be similar to what you have off the shelf. So maybe we can put about we'll do like a cool gray five percent uh, excuse me cyan zero percent magenta zero percent yellow and we'll do let's try 50 percent black so it gives us a little bit of a cool gray you can add a little more blue in there if you want we'll select ok and we'll hit option and delete we'll just fill that there real quick now let's go to select color range and we can select this little square here and we'll leave it at 100 for now we'll go to channels make a new channel mask we'll hit deselect go to our alpha channel and we'll inverse that now I know we have this little square here we can just come back up here we'll just fill that with white option D fill it with our white foreground color and we'll double click on this We'll call it cool gray, make it a spot color. And then we'll put in those same numbers. I think we had like eight for cyan, zero magenta, zero yellow, and 100% black, excuse me, 50% black. We'll choose okay. We'll use that as our cool gray and we'll leave the solidity at 50% just because it is a gray. So we'll click OK. We'll move this above our highlight white. Generally, 
I like to print cool gray right before my highlight white so those colors can mix together. Now let's turn everything on and we can come in here and we can adjust these colors. Our white base generally is going to be the prime one that we want to adjust. So I'll go to image adjustments and levels and we'll adjust these sliders until our image looks a little bit more like the original. Pull this back some. Looks pretty good. Let's turn our cool gray on and off here. As a matter of fact, let's make a proof window real quick. We'll come up here to the top. We'll click proof window. Go over to our proof window, turn off all of our separations. And we'll try and get this thing closer to what it looks like over here to the left. Let's turn our highlight white and our cool gray off. Looks like we probably have a little much, too much cool gray. So we'll adjust that. Let's turn all this on. You want to see how it looks all together. We'll use our adjust color, which is levels. And we'll pull some of that gray out. Fantastic. Our highlight white looks like we could pull that back as well. We'll go to adjust color, pull some of that out. We'll hit OK and we'll go back to our white base, adjust it a little bit more. Get some of our contrast back. And that looks pretty good to me. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. If we wanted to increase this red, we could always go to adjust color, bump that up a little bit more. But at this point, it's just going to be to taste. And this separation is ready to go. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different colors here. We might be able to get away with not using turquoise. It just depends. And you can even use the same method to separate simple artwork. You just may need to go in and adjust your contrast on that image. What parts of it are completely black. For example, let me open up this piece of artwork here. If we were to do a red based off of this piece of artwork, and we went up to select color range and we selected red, we hit OK. Then we make a new alpha channel. We'll deselect that, inverse it, double click on it. We'll call it red, make it a spot color. And because we need a solid red, we'll just turn this to 100. Now, right here, this red, it's kind of gray. So we can go to adjust color, take our black selector here select where this should be completely black this should be completely white hit ok there we go just like that we have a red separation there is a little bit of red in this yellow but it's a golden yellow so you can leave that or or not we can go back to just color take our white selector get rid of that hit ok there you go we've got our red it's always fun doing separations on images like this i'll leave a link so that way you can download this image Play around with it yourself and show me what you came up with. We'll see you in the next tutorial. I think I'm going to tweak this a little bit more. It'll be a fun print.